Okay, I'm going to go over the 2018 AP Chemistry FRQ question number four. This is just a four-point question, so it's a little bit on the shorty side here. And it says here was a nice picture we have of sulfur, carbon, and oxygen. We have a, a carbon disulfide and a COS molecule. So that's sort of like carbon mono, uh, carbon dioxide, you know, double bond O, double bond O. But in this kind, we have S on both sides. And down here, we have an S and an O on this side. So the first one says the, the table gives the molecular structures and boiling points for the compounds CS2 and COS. In terms of the types and relative strengths of all the intermolecular forces in each compound, explain why the boiling point of CS2 is higher than the boiling point of COS. So we know what we're going to say is that this guy has stronger intermolecular forces than this one does. Okay, the first point is just for listing what the uh, intermolecular forces are. Every molecule has uh, London dispersion forces, I'll say LDF, so we can put that down for both of them. Um, but this first molecule, since it's CS2, you can see it's a very nonpolar, uh, that's all it's going to have is London dispersion forces. The second one, because we have this carbon-oxygen bond, we can also expect to have some dipole-dipole forces, dipole-dipole interactions, I like to say. So the second one's going to have London dispersion and dipole-dipole. First one is London dispersion. That Say that alone, that is worth one point. We just earned one point on this question. And then the second part, it says in terms of the relative strength, why is this boiling point greater? All we have to say is that the London dispersion forces in CS2, okay, must be greater than both the London dispersion forces and the uh, dipole-dipole interactions in COS. Okay, that's all we have to say and that will earn us a second point for this part. Now you could go on and say, well, why is the London dispersion force greater in this first case? And the idea would be that that sulfur has more electrons And therefore, it would have, let me say that better, more electrons. And therefore, it would have a more polarizable electron cloud. And that would be the correct answer for that. But it doesn't actually say go into an explanation. It just says in terms of the intermolecular forces. So the fact that the London dispersion forces here is greater than the London and the dipole-dipole here, okay, counts for why that is larger. So that's the second point, two points so far. The third question goes here and it says, okay, a uh, 10 uh, gram sample of CS2 in an evacuated five liter rigid container, that's a volume, at 325 Kelvin, that's a temperature, and uh, what is the pressure in the container once everything has vaporized? So that sounds suspiciously like PV equals NRT. We're asking for a P, we're given a volume. Um, we have grams, we can change that into moles. R is a constant and we're given temperature. So what we're gonna look for is PV equals NRT. We're gonna solve for P. So P equals NRT over V. This is what I wanna use. Well, first thing I need to do is change my grams into moles. So CS2, I have carbon, I have sulfur and sulfur. Take those numbers from the periodic table, add them together, 76.13 grams. Okay, I'm going to change that into moles, very simply. So 10 grams, 76.13 grams per mole. We get 0 0.131 moles of CS2. Now we're just going to substitute into the equation. And what I have as pressure, okay, here's my moles. Be sure and use the correct value of R. Watch your units. So uh, liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And I get this. And then 325 Kelvin, that was given in the problem. We didn't even have to change the Kelvin. Everything's good. And the volume, we said, was 5 liters. So when I substitute those four numbers in, I get 0 0.70 atmospheres. We're using two significant figures because the 5.0 liters only had two significant figures. So that's my answer, 0 0.70. That's worth two points. Okay, so we get one point here for uh, just getting to the moles. So even if you didn't finish, if you got the moles, you got one point. And then making it all the way to the end is the second point. So that's the four-point problem, number four.